Kiwana friends, how are you tonight? Remember, we've started this new semester kind of looking at the life of Christ together, right? And for the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about what the Bible says about Jesus' life here on earth. Well, tonight we're going to be talking about how Jesus called his disciples to join him in ministry. So let's think back about some of the key things we've learned about Jesus' life so far. In fact, let's play a game. Are you ready? True or false? Here we go. True or false? Jesus was born in Jerusalem. And eh, false. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. All right. True or false? Jesus was baptized. True. Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. Three. Satan tempted Jesus for 20 days in the desert. Eh, false. Jesus was tempted for 40 days. Jesus' parents were John and Mary. False. Jesus' parents were Joseph and Mary here on earth. How about this one? Jesus was 12 years old when his parents left him at the temple in Jerusalem by accident. That is true. Jesus was 12 years old when that happened. How about this one? Satan tempted Jesus with water in the desert. No. Satan tempted Jesus with bread in the desert to turn stones into bread. All right. How about this one? Jesus was scared and didn't know what to do when he found himself alone in Jerusalem for three days as Joseph and Mary searched for him. False. Jesus was at the temple, in fact, talking with the re really well-educated, knowledgeable men about scripture during that time. All right, well, that catches us up. Are you ready? Do you have your Bible? I'll wait right here. You go get your Bible and turn it to Matthew chapter four. Great, okay. Now before we begin looking in the Bible, let me ask you this. What does the word servant mean? What do you think of that, of that word? Yes, of course, it means one who serves, right? Now, would you normally think of the most important person in the room as the servant? No, usually the most important person in the room thinks they should be the one being served, right? Not that they should serve someone else, but Jesus changed all of that. He served others by teaching and healing and having compassion on them. All right, now let's look in your Bibles. Matthew chapter four, we're gonna start at verse 18. Are you ready? While walking by the Sea of Galilee, Jesus saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, Zebedee, sorry, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called to them. Immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. Wow, Jesus said he would make them fishers of men. What does that mean? Well, Fishermen usually cast out their nets and would bring in fish. Fishers of men are looking to bring men in, to bring people in, to teach people about God. So Peter and Andrew and James and John wanted to become fishers of people. They left their fishing immediately and followed Jesus. Obviously they had heard of him, right? Wow, okay, well we can see. This is right after Jesus was tempted in the desert and he was getting ready to choose specific people to mentor, to teach, to disciple. Jesus returned to that area around the Jordan River where John the Baptist was still preaching and still teaching and many people had become his disciples or pupils of John the Baptist. They wanted to spend lots of time with them and, and learn to become like their teacher but John the Baptist was not concerned about his own popularity or how many people followed him. John the Baptist wanted to point to Jesus. That was his main goal and main priority. Do you know how many disciples Jesus picked all together? That's right, 12. We just heard about four, which ones? Peter and Andrew, James and John, two sets of brothers. What do we know about these men from scripture? Well, we know that they were fishermen, right? Two sets of brothers. We know they were eager to follow Jesus because they left immediately. Now, being a fisherman was a pretty humble job. 
In fact, most people would have thought that fishermen were not very well educated or smart. Most important people would not have chosen fishermen to be their very most important helpers, to work with them the most closely. But Jesus did things differently. He didn't look on the outside of a person, how much money they had or how important they were in the world. Jesus looked at a person's heart. That's how God judges things, right? He doesn't judge by how well someone is educated, how much money they have. God looks instead at the most important things, at our attitudes and our heart and what we're really thinking and feeling. Okay, so let's really quickly look at a few other scripture where we see some disciples called. First, let's look at Matthew, or I'm sorry, let's look at John 1, 43 through 50. Are you ready? The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethesda, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said, come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, behold, an Israelite indeed in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, how do you know me? Jesus answered, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And Jesus said, because I said to you, I saw you sitting under the fig tree, you believe? You will see greater things than these. Isn't that something? Jesus' groups of followers were growing. He had, he had disciples, Peter, Andrew, James, John, Philip, and Nathanael now. Well, we might also hear of Nathaniel sometimes by his other name, Bartholomew. And Jesus called others to follow him. In Matthew 2, I'm sorry, in Mark 2, 14, we hear, And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. Levi is another name for Matthew. And notice Matthew, the tax gatherer, also went with Jesus right away. Matthew was a tax collector in the town of Capernaum. Some people would have thought that Matthew could never be a follower of Jesus because tax collectors were often cheaters and they, they took money from people. So people didn't like the tax collectors, but Jesus knew that Matthew wanted to follow God. So Jesus said, Matthew, come follow me. And Matthew got up from the tax table, the tax booth, and he began following Jesus. The disciples must have had very tender hearts towards God because they followed Jesus so quickly. They immediately left their careers, whether they were a fisherman or tax collector, to travel with Jesus. Most of them did this based on his simple invitation, follow me. It was not their education or their talent that made them special. It was their commitment to Jesus. Think for a moment. Why would it have been important for Jesus to personally teach disciples during his life here on earth? Because he was going to heaven, right? And the disciples would have to be prepared to lead the church when he was gone as his appointed leaders after he returned to his heavenly home. Did Jesus pick the disciples because they were perfect, do you think? No, not at all. In fact, Peter denied Jesus at the end of his life and Judas betrayed him. No, Jesus picked these men because they had hearts that were ready and willing to serve. God doesn't care about our status or our popularity or even what we look like. God does care about our decision to follow him. Jesus invited others to follow him. Soon, James, called James the Less because he was a different James than the James the brother of John, and Thomas followed Jesus. And then another Simon, and Thaddeus, and then Judas Iscariot. More and more people became followers of Jesus. Even though many followed him, these 12 men were with him almost all the time. This group of 12 became known as the 12 apostles. Jesus gave these men special jobs to do. Peter, Andrew, James and John, Philip, Thomas, Matthew and Nathaniel, or Bartholomew, James the Less, Simon, Thaddeus, and Judas Iscariot. These are the 12 disciples. But all followers of Jesus who try to be like Jesus are called disciples in a general sense, including you and me. So in the early church, the disciples were eventually called Christians. 
Christ followers. In the ministry of Jesus, there were many disciples, but these 12 had a particular role to play. Jesus taught these 12 men for three years. We're going to hear about some of these times in the next few weeks, but imagine what that must have been like, can you? Wouldn't you have loved to know what Jesus said to them? Wouldn't you have loved to know what it was like to hear Jesus teach, to hear what he had to say? Wait? We do know, don't we? Guys, that's what the first four books of the New Testament are. The record of Jesus' time spent with the disciples primarily. One was written by Matthew, the tax gatherer. One was written by John Mark. One was written by Luke, who was another disciple, not one of the twelve, but close to them. And then finally, one was written by John, who is sometimes called the disciple whom Jesus loved. John was basically Jesus' best friend here on earth. So if we want to learn to be fishers of men, to bring people to Jesus, and we want to learn the kind of things the disciples learned while they were being taught by Jesus, there's a pretty simple way to begin, isn't there? It's all right here for us to read and pray over and to try to live like Jesus did as followers of Christ. That's just about the best news ever. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the example of Jesus in every part of our lives. Even when we think about how to serve you, we can look to the example of Jesus, who served humbly and with absolute dedication. Please give us the opportunity to tell others about Jesus as we serve. In Christ's name, amen. All right, are you guys ready for a fun challenge tonight? Mr. Shelton has been working on a really fun minute to win it, kind of a race tonight. Um, all right, so stay tuned for this challenge for your whole family. I hope you hashtag at Chapel City Kids to post it. And I will see you next week, a lot of friends. Have a great week. Bye. Hey guys, Mr. Shelton here again. Tonight, we're going to do something a little bit different. You're going to need to get yourself some balloons. Now, they can be big ones, little ones, it doesn't matter. So what we're going to do is we're going to see how long we can keep two of them up in the air, but using only one hand. All right? So you want, you're shooting for at least a minute. Okay? So we're going to see how Mr. Shelton does, and then I can't wait to see how you guys do. All right? So here we go. using the table and that didn't last long either. All right, so you can see how much fun this can be and how hard it can be. So you guys do your best, all right? Get the whole family involved. And I can't wait to see you guys on hashtag Chapel City Kids. All right, you guys have a great time. We'll see you next week.